If you're like me and wondering how in the world was Sony going to make $300 million on the PC in 2022, they just answered that question with one word, Spider-Man. What's good, Deck Gang? Did you guys see that Steam Deck State of Play? It was awesome. Oh, did I say Steam Deck State of Play? Clearly I meant to say PlayStation State of Play. That conference was all about games for the PlayStation platforms, right? Anyway, yeah, it was damn good. And I can see it now. The Sony fanboys are gonna be like, really? You're excited about a port from 2018? Yeah, duh, of course. Here's the thing, gamers have so many choices when it comes to video games that we can afford to wait a few years, even almost five years for a game like Spider-Man. Moreover, we're happy to get it on PC, where we know we can own this game for years from now, even when we upgrade to a new PC. And if it's made well, it'll scale up on new hardware nicely, so I don't need to buy a new version to play at increased resolutions. Or more importantly, we can play it on underpowered hardware, maybe something that doesn't have a discrete graphics card, like, you know, a Steam Deck. Heck yeah, boys, we're taking our web slinging on the go, or in my case, to the bedroom. Either way, Steam Deck means life, or something like that. And what about Spider-Man mods, maybe Venom? Carnage, I'm here for all of it. For what it's worth, I've already beaten 2018 Spider-Man, but that's okay from now on. I'm gonna day one all Sony games that come to PC. I love what they're doing and I wanna see more of it, so why not? And you know, it's not just 2018 Spider-Man that's coming. After State of Play, Sony published a blog post that confirmed that Miles Morales is coming too. So Spider-Man Remastered releases on August 12th, with Miles following shortly after in full. We're looking at a really packed Sony PC lineup this year with Uncharted, Spider-Man, and Miles all confirmed. But in addition to those three, there is more leaked information about Sackboy and Returnal coming to PC. According to Glockpop on Reddit, the Sackboy port has been ready since sometime last year. He also said it would include ray trace shadows, ambient occlusion, and lighting as well as DSS, and get this, DualSense support. Phenomenal. Later in that same Reddit thread, Empress of Sony actually posted pictures of some of those options that you're seeing here. Empress of Sony also posted pictures of Returnal PC settings, and you see a lot of awesome options. Ray trace shadows and reflections, toggles for all of the post-processing, including bloom and film grain, as well as robust controls, including keyboard presets for right-handed or presumably left-handed players. This looks sick, and if 2022 is this big, I can't wait to see what's in store for the future of PC and Sony. I mean, with Spider-Man and Miles being ported, Everything is back on the table. Ghost of Tsushima, Ratchet 2016, Gran Turismo, and Horizon Forbidden West were already on the GeForce leak. I think Demon Souls, Ragnarok, and The Last of Us series are absolutely on the table. And then we have wishlist stuff like Wipeout, Gravity Rush, Eco, Shadow of the Colossus, and of course, Bloodborne. And if we have two Marvel games coming, then why not Wolverine 2? I'm clearly getting ahead of myself, but I'm excited. And like I said earlier, I'm going to be voting with my wallet and hoping that that helps. What about you? Will you buy these games on day one? The Resident Evil 4 remake was also showcased during the state of play, and it looks really good as well. I do wonder what the gameplay will be like for this one. At this point, the franchise has so many various archetypes for gameplay that I have no idea which way this one is going to lean. I really enjoyed the pace and gameplay of the original RE4, and I hope they're able to keep the essence of that. Either way, they've been knocking these games out of the park, so I trust that this one will deliver. Capcom also hit us with Street Fighter VI, which is looking solid. Ryu, Chun-Li, and Luke all look great. They also hit us with this new Shaolin monk character named Jamie. Following that, there were some leaks of additional characters. We have the original 8 with Ryu, Ken, Zangief, Daozim, Honda, Blanca, Guile, and Chun. Then there are a host of other new and returning characters. At this point, it's unclear if these will all be in the base roster. As far as we know, this could just be concept art. But the game itself looks fun, and I'm really digging these designs so far. Final Fantasy 16 also looks like it's going to be a blast. I don't have much to say about it, just that it looks great, and I'll definitely pick it up when it drops in summer of next year. There were also a bunch of VR titles on display, and I'm really hoping that these make it to PC as well. I don't own an index, but if the rumors of a standalone headset are true, I would snap that up quicker than the Curse of Vecna. Yes, I, I've been watching too much Netflix. But seriously, these games look great, especially the VR Horizon title. 
And the last game from the showcase that I want to talk about is Rollerdrome. This is a skating, shooter, hybrid, and believe it or not, I've actually had my eyes on this one for years. I had no idea it would end up like this. The developer shared early video of this game back in 2018. It went sort of viral in indie developer circles simply because of how rad it looks even in that really early prototyping stage. The developer captioned one of the tweets, Lara Croft's Pro Skater 2, and yeah, that struck a chord with me. Since then, it looks like it got picked up by Private Division and Roll7 who made Ali Ali World, and I'm guessing that deal came with a decent budget because this trailer looks great. I can't wait to get my hands on this when it drops in August. Oh, this is not state of play related, but there was an update on Modern Warfare 2. I reported on this possibly coming to Steam in a recent video, and yet sure enough, that is basically confirmed at this point. The Call of Duty account tweeted, quote, the ultimate weapon is team. End quote. Get it? Is team? Is steam? Clever. That's a good one. And then the Steam account quote tweeted that with the eyes emoji. So yeah, it's safe to say this is coming. This prompted some really good investigation from Morwell, and there seems to be solid information pointing to the rest of the missing Call of Duty library coming to Steam as well. What a time to be alive. Now listen, if you're enjoying this video, hit that like and subscribe button now because I'm going to get some major dislikes for what I'm about to say. Ready? <clears throat> The Epic Game Store is running a big sale that lasts another two weeks. I don't have a content creator account or anything like that. I'm just letting y'all know that I was able to buy Final Fantasy VII Remake, Sifu, and Kina for a total of like 80 US bucks, and then I used Heroic Game Launcher to install and configure them, and Boiler to import them into Steam as non-Steam games, and yeah, it all runs great on Steam Deck. I've really been wanting to play these on the Steam Deck, so I'm glad I finally took the plunge. Check it out if you don't have an aversion to the Sweeney Launcher. So Valve published a new video called A Few More Things Added to Steam Deck. This is basically a short recap of all the software updates in Q2 so far. It includes the big things like the lock screen, refresh rate switching, and performance profiles, as well as small things like the battery percentage and Windows drivers. It's a really good recap, especially for the people that are just getting a Steam Deck. Check it out if you haven't already. Right after that, Valve released a small Steam Deck update, but it's a really good one and once again points to Valve updating the docked experience. The biggest change is the option to choose a max resolution per game in the game's app settings. In my eyes, there are two big resolution-based problems that the Steam Deck has, and this solves both of them. For low-end games, you want the option to set a higher resolution when the game is docked. For example, Assault Android Cactus can handle 60 FPS at 1440p on the Steam Deck just fine and it looks a lot better on the big screen than 720p. So now you can set the max resolution in the app settings then go into the game and you should have more resolution options above 800p. This also forces more resolution options into older games so you can run Fallout New Vegas at native 4K which it was never meant to do. Thanks to the real McCoy on the Steam Deck Discord for this image. The other problem that this update fixes is the issue where the game scope window was running at the native resolution of the display. This could be a problem for 4K displays. For one, the game will scale from the in-game resolution to the native resolution and that will add some overhead on the processor. Secondly, certain USB-C hubs can only handle 4K at 30 FPS, not 60 FPS. So if you can't set the resolution to lower than 4K, you're stuck playing a game at 30 FPS which sucks. This no longer happens. The default resolution is lower, which leaves enough video bandwidth for 60 FPS. There are other updates and bug fixes related to the docked experience here, but that was easily the biggest one and I'm glad it's fixed. The last thing in this wave of updates is that Valve deployed a server-side improvement that will quote, reduce the incremental download size of shader pre-caching data for the Steam Deck, end quote. That's as per Plagman from the dev team at Valve. That should hopefully mean less annoying updates for every game you have installed just because there are new shaders. And finally, for the community spotlight, I want to shout out Reddit user FickleAnimal2192 for what they're calling the Steam Shade. It's a foldable magnetic sun shield for the Steam Deck. It looks like it's a great aid if you plan on playing out in the sun, and best of all, you can fit it all in a Steam Deck case. He's included links to the designs if you want to print this out yourself, so go check it out. All right, you got two back-to-back -back bangers from me. What more do you want? Shout out to my patrons. I love y'all. Deck gang out. Goodbye.